The last few decades, China has been experiencing a massive amount of growth, with GDP growing at almost 10% every single year during this growth period. And now, of course, a lot of that growth has been backed by the Chinese real estate market. Investors and consumer buyers alike have been buying up real estate with the expectation of it going higher and higher. And unfortunately, continuing to leverage out thinner as prices get higher is a recipe for disaster because what eventually will happen is you'll have private retail and institutional investors alike will continue to make bets on a trend that is really non-existent. Just like how this Jenga tower being stacked taller and taller with each turn will eventually fall unless there's A, more pieces being added, or B, you can ensure that the growth of this tower is sustainable. Now, history may not necessarily repeat itself 100% of the time, but it sure does have patterns because this sounds awfully familiar with what we experienced in 2007 when homebuyers purchased homes with the expectation that the values would continue to increase. And of course, we all now know in hindsight the fallout of not just our economy, but the entire global economic landscape because of the 2008 housing market crash. So in this video, we'll be discussing what the heck is even happening along with three potential events that could occur based on what is currently happening with the Chinese real estate market. Now, if we're gonna tell the full story of the Chinese economic landscape and its potential effect on our global economy, we have to bring up a little company known as Evergrande. Now, for those of you that don't know or those who have been living under a rock, Evergrande is China's second largest development company, which by the way is crazy considering that it was only founded in 1996. Now, to put that into perspective, Brookfield Asset Management, which is another real estate development company very similar to Evergrande, was founded in 1899. Brookfield last year reported $626 billion in assets under management with $63 billion in revenue, whereas Evergrande founded in just 1996, about one-sixth of the lifespan of Brookfield, already had $355 billion in assets under management with $110 billion in revenue in 2020. Now, when I first started my real estate investing journey about 10 years ago, I remember my mentor first warning me that fast, over-leveraged growth, especially during times when the market is artificially growing like it did in 2006 and like it is doing right now, you're eventually going to have to face the consequences and all that over-leveraging that you did to grow that quickly is eventually going to come back and harm. You. And it seems that Evergrande is facing those consequences now, considering the fact that ever since Chinese authorities stepped forward, stating that they will start clamping down on debt levels of real estate development companies, Evergrande started selling assets off with as much as 25% discounts. And amongst other things, Evergrande actually went as far as to tell their employees and demanding them to loan them cash or they'll lose their bonuses. All this, of course, a desperate attempt to reliquidate their entire portfolio to pay off whatever they can. So considering that an Evergrande default is likely with shares on default risk plummeting to an 11 year low, let's talk about the three major events that I think will potentially occur due to this Evergrande crisis. With point number one, which is that it's gonna cause a major ripple effect. Now this is the most obvious one, but what does this actually look like? Let's go down the list of who this directly impacts. So number one, you have the employees, which by the way, Evergrande has 200,000 employees with providing 3.8 million jobs every single year. We also have home buyers who put down deposits, which according to Bloomberg, Evergrande has taken payments slash deposits for 1.5 million properties. We also have investors who have money directly in Evergrande, some of which includes Vanguard and also BlackRock. Uh, we have banks who hold Evergrande debt, which by the way, roughly 54% of the $310 billion of Evergrande debt is held by hundreds of direct lending from different banks. We also have suppliers who will most likely go out of business if Evergrande can't deliver on their previously existing contracts. As a matter of fact, according to CNBC, in an August report, S&P estimated that over the next 12 months, Evergrande will have over 240 billion yuan, AKA 37.16 billion US dollars of bills and trade payables from contractors to settle, which by the way is around 100 billion yuan, which is translated to 15.4 billion US dollars. Now time will tell what the real global ripple effect is going to be, but it's not just Evergrande. As a matter of fact, we had 165 different real estate companies across the country of China that actually went bankrupt in just the first half of 2021. 
So again, time will tell what's going to happen with Evergrande, what's going to happen with these other companies, what's going to happen with all these debts being defaulted, and of course the Chinese economy, we'll all have to see in the coming months ahead. Which leads us to point number two, which is that other markets, aka our US economy, will most likely be put in the position where we're going to have to continue to kick the can down the road even further than what we did the last 18 months. Now recently, Janet Yellen has pleaded with Congress, writing a letter to increase the debt ceiling. Now in layman's terms, it's pretty much Janet Yellen asking the US to increase our spending limit on our credit card. Now this gets me thinking, why would Janet Yellen, along with other individuals, plead with Congress to raise the US debt ceiling? Well, maybe, just maybe, it has something to do with the fact that our US Treasury could actually run out of cash by November of this year if the $22 trillion debt ceiling isn't raised more than what it actually is. So what does this have to do with the Chinese real estate market and Evergrande? Well, it actually has everything to do with it. Because during recessive economic times and volatility, Chinese investors have the tendency to look towards US Treasuries as a safe haven. And well, if all that's happening on our end, well, one could wonder what the actual outcome is going to be for the global economic landscape. And that, my friends, is what brings us to final point number three, which is the continued spread amongst global markets. Now, aside from all the other items I've mentioned with the first and second point, here's another way that the Evergrande crisis can actually affect us here in the United States. In the last five to 10 years or so, China has experienced a massive economic growth on the back of real estate. Now, obviously, because of this, it's created tremendous competition in the capital markets, so much so that we saw record numbers of foreign buyers, especially and mainly Chinese buyers, enter the US real estate market. As a matter of fact, according to research done by Wharton School of Business, Chinese buyers have led foreign investments in US homes for the past seven years. In 2019, 2020, they bought US home properties worth $11.5 billion, or a little more than a sixth of the total, according to a report done by the National Association of realtors. One six, guys, that is absolutely insane. Now, considering that we have big defaults happening over there in the Chinese real estate market, it could potentially lead to a big sell off of the assets that are located here in the US that are formerly and currently owned by those large Chinese investment institutions. And because history will tell us a default of one major player can oftentimes lead to panic liquidations in other smaller real estate companies, this could potentially lead to a 180 complete turn in not only just the Chinese real estate market, but also the domestic real estate market that we have here in the United States. So sorry for the interruption. We're actually filming this five hours after we recorded the original video that you're watching now in our studio, but there's been some breaking news. And apparently while we were filming, another Chinese development company, Cynic Holdings, went down 87%, literally this morning, the time when we were recording, went down 87% before trading was suspended. Now, obviously, when it comes to uh, Evergrande, they're going to have a huge test this Thursday, $83.5 million due this Thursday with an additional $47.5 million payment due in interest September 29th. So again, it just reaffirms and it really reinforces the ripple effect that's happening right now. And another thing, as of today, September 20th, you guys are going to release, uh, this video is going to be released tomorrow, September 21st. But again, while we were filming the video this morning, crypto markets suddenly lose $250 billion in value as Evergrande turmoil pummels Bitcoin, Ethereum, and other major cryptocurrencies. So again, guys, it's interesting to see how all this is shaping the ripple effect, as I mentioned earlier in this video, that this is gonna cause to our global economy. It's affecting everything. It's affecting Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies. It's affecting other real estate companies in China, potentially even in the US. It's affecting the housing market. It's affecting the global economic landscape. So guys, leave your thoughts in the comments. If you have any new updates for myself or anybody watching this video, keep it going, guys. Put it in the comments. Let's work together to get the latest news out there. This is going bonkers right now, which is why we're filming this literally five hours after we filmed this original video. But guys, thank you so much. Uh, enjoy the rest of the video, but comment down again. The latest news updates. Sorry for the interruption. Enjoy the rest of the video. Now, having said that, if we look at some of the largest economic downturns that we've seen in history, a lot of times we see that it's not the actual event itself that causes the recession, but the response of the psychological masses that actually produce more of the harm. Now, this is what I mean by point number three in saying that this can continue to spread fear amongst global markets, because a lot of times in a situation where something big happens, like an Evergrande crisis or Lehman Brothers failing 13 years ago, it can oftentimes lead to the psychology of mass investors 
wanting to hoard and hold on to as much cash as much as they can. In 2008, we saw business revenue plummet considering the fact that the average Joe, the average investor, the average individual had major cutbacks in their own individual budget. I mean, people were wanting to save money left and right, spending stopped, therefore the money movement in our economy completely halted, hurting businesses, corporations, debt, investments, you name it. Now, I'm not saying all that's gonna happen and people will lose their shirts and the streets will be red with blood just because of the Evergrande crisis. However, you cannot deny the certain possibility that the domino economic effect can certainly create a scenario where that is true. Now guys, like I mentioned earlier in this video, there's still a lot left that needs to be said, a lot more that needs to be seen. And really at the end of the day, we're just talking about the tip of the iceberg. So having said that, I wanna hear your guys' thoughts. Leave your comment in the section below. What do you think about this whole Evergrande crisis? What do you think is gonna happen? Is this the beginning of a potential global monetary and economic collapse, right? What is this the next 2008? What's gonna happen, right? Is the, are they gonna be bailed out? So with that said, guys, thank you so much for watching. Like this video and of course, subscribe if you're feeling generous. And I encourage you to share this video. Let's continue the conversation so we all can get smarter and make the best decisions for us financially as possible. So with that said, guys, thank you and I'll see you guys in the next one.